Hey y'all, Noons here, and welcome back to Noons Airborne RC. And if it's your first time here, go ahead and smash that like and subscribe button so you can get notified for future content. Well, everybody, here we go with another unboxing. Today we have the E-Flight F-18 Hornet 80 millimeter. Little brief history on how I got this. I ordered this when it first came out and I was able to put two flights on it and the landing gear got locked down. Uh, something got fried out of it. I went ahead and I sent it back because to get to that module, the gear module, you have to cut the plane apart. Well, I sent it back to Horizon. They made good. They sent me a complete replacement. This thing's been sitting in my little workshop for quite some time. I need a Warbird for 4th of July. This is going to be it. Well, uh, y'all should know about this, but if you don't th know, this is the F-18 Hornet 80 millimeter extra scale from Horizon Hobby released maybe um, a year -ish ago. It's 80 millimeters. It's 53 inches long, 38 and a half inches wide. It has a 12 blade uh, fan with an in runner motor. It's 6S with a 100 amp ESC. Um, that's pretty much the specs, everybody. So let's go ahead and get the, to it. Get some. All right, everybody, let's go ahead and get this thing unboxed. Well, what I like to commonly say, strip rat of her clues. All right, let's pull this out. It's coming along pretty good. Nice. I never opened this up, guys. Uh, not even to check it after shipping. The box was in pristine shape. Uh, really no need when the box comes pristine uh, that you have to go ahead and check the plane. Um, if there's something is damaged on it, it's going to be on my end. I did wait a year or so to go ahead and unbox it. So no fault to nobody but my own. Go ahead and put that right there for some uh, ambiance. This is how she comes, guys. Nice and packaged, just like Horizon does in their jets. Um, let's go ahead and pull this out. First of all, let's go ahead. I'm going to go ahead and get my handy dandy knife. Let's go ahead and do all the little nice cuts. Hope everybody has a nice, safe 4th of July. Like to hear what everybody's doing, what they got planned. Go ahead and drop that down in the comments. I do like, I do appreciate hearing that stuff. Hearing how people America it up. Um, FYI guys. I'm Patriotic Alpha Foxtrot, so if that's not your speed, just stop playing, go somewhere else. Go ahead and take out our first bit of foam. And I think I missed the cut right there. We got our first wing right here, guys. Don't look like much. You got your uh, digital servos. We got our ball links. Uh, this model does have flaps. So we have flaps right here. Nice and tight. And we have our ailerons. Uh, she does come with missiles for the sides. It is a quick, um, you have your two servo wires right here. There's no quick mounts. Um, I call them soft mounts, but that's completely fine. And it's held together by two screws on the bottom and one spar. Nothing much to it. We also got our navigation lights. Uh, nice paint job. Undamaged, no flaws. There's the first wing, y'all. And in true fashion, we got our second wing and we got to go ahead and cut this foam off again. Like I said, these things are packaged very, very well. I haven't gotten a broken plane in the mail from Horizon yet. I've had the boxes damaged, planes unscathed. Other wing, exact mirror copy. 
Very plain uh, uh, scheme on the wings. Next, we're gonna go ahead and here's our rudders. You do get two. They do get screwed in. Uh, two screws hold them on. They are angled, so it's very easy to get the left and the right. So if you're looking at it, they will go in just that way. Two screws. We have one servo lead right there on each one on the, for the fuse. Two screws, call it and done. And you gotta love Gotta love that little scheme right there. One thing I will say that about this scheme, guys, is the jet is a lot of gray. And from what I remember flying it, it is kind of hard if you get far out telling what is uh, top is top and bottom is bottom. So if you wanna get this jet and you wanna be able, and your eyes aren't so good or you wanna be able to see it, um, one thing I'm thinking of doing, it's not gonna make it quite scale but I was gonna go ahead and take some of this red. I have some fire engine red in my airbrush gun. Now I was gonna go ahead and give it a stripe right down the top. That way you'd be able to tell right side up. Orientation, you know, it's all about that. We have our first elevator, horizontal stab. You do get two. Uh, we will go through and um, the, it comes with the little bits right here. Now, if I remember right, these things right here want a four degree down tilt. And I use my pitch gauge from a helicopter to go ahead and make sure that they're pretty even. Uh, reason why is if you have them twisted like this, you're gonna have to compensate with the aileron and it just creates more drag and it's just not the right way to do it. So when we put this together, we're gonna make sure that these uh, horizontal stabs are true to each other with the four degrees. Um, put into it mechanically before we start even messing with the radio. Put these right out in front. Uh, we got our nose cone. It does have a magnetic uh, nose cone. And we do have our bag of tidbits right here. These are the screws, the bind plug, and uh, the mechanic setup that we need to do, do the, or, um, the horizontal stabs. Next thing up guys is the spar. Most important part, the one part that I go ahead and I always leave at home. Reason why I like taking my planes put together out to the airfield. Common spar, we'll go ahead and we'll put that right there. Um, next we're gonna go ahead is all the little ordnance stuff. All the doohickeys that I usually don't fly with, but we have our tanks right here. You do get two of them. One for each side right here. And as you can go ahead and you see, you get one on either side of the wing. Then we have our two missiles right here for our wing tips. And then we have two more ordinances that go on the bottom of the wings. All ordinances, guys, they are the quick detach, so you can easily have them and take them off. I prefer to fly with now, uh, without them on. Mind you, I am at 4,800 feet in elevation, so the air is thin enough as it is, and I need to create as much lift. The ordinance just does not drive down here. Right. We got our beautiful American flag that goes on the back end of the fuselage. Kind of see it in the picture right there. We definitely will be doing that for 4th of July. And you got your handy dandy manual, and most importantly, the amendment right here, guys. The amendment. And I believe on the amendment, it has the different throws for your flaps and stuff. Most importantly, guys, when you guys get that amendment with that manual, always keep it. Uh, let's go ahead and, oh. Our main tank right here with the Palmia Prisoner of War missing in action on both sides. This one right here, everybody, goes right into the center of the fuselage, as you see right there. And all that's left inside here, let me go ahead and move this out of the way, is we have the fuselage, so let's go ahead and pull that out. This is the funnest part for me, and the most daunting, because you never know how they have it in the box, and you don't want to put really pull and pry on it too much. All 
And there she is, y'all. She is now free. So that is the fuselage. You do have two outlets. It is a single 80 millimeter. When I did fly uh, the original one about a year ago, it made a beautiful whooshing sound. And uh, it was amazing. So let's go ahead and do some close-ups of the fuselage. Here's a close-up of the fuselage. It is one of their um, extra scale. So you do have little scale tivets, uh, like your antennas and your fuel. Got your cockpit, really nice detail. Your two screw mounts for your wing or your spar. Your two leads, this is where they go. And as you guys can see, they are labeled aileron and flap signals towards the front and the negatives towards the back. There is your lead for your rudders. And here, is the mechanical setup for the rear and let's go ahead and take off this hatch and give you guys a look on the inside go ahead and turn it over and as you guys can see it comes with the ar636 bravo receiver have plenty of room for a battery um, last time i ran on this i was running 5000s and 5500s um, you got plenty of room to go ahead and move the battery. Um, I will be using my Zyquay controller to go ahead and balance this thing out. So hey everybody, I went ahead and got her out and I got my trusty little robot stand. Let's go ahead and start with the elevators. So when we start with the stabs, we're going to have the two stabs right here. We're going to need these two pieces that come in the kit. The two collars and two of the three by eight millimeter screws very easy they're the black small black ones in there so let's go ahead and let me show you guys so when you turn on the aircraft these servos they're going to go ahead and center wherever they're going to center out right uh, when these get centered that's when we want to have our four millimeter up elevator so let me go ahead and put this in here so just to get a reference for this I'm going to go ahead and take these and these right here guys this part goes to the inside so if you're looking at your stab you want this to go in this way not this way you want the l shape to go to the outside and it just slips in now when you put this in you can sh slide this more forward or you can slide it more back and that's going to go ahead and help you with that four degrees uh, for starters, what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm just going to go ahead and center these bad boys out right here. And they are going to take two 3 by 8 millimeter screws, uh, Phillips head. So let's go ahead and get our screwdriver. And let's go ahead and screw these in. I'm not going to screw them down tight, guys. Uh, we still got to set up the plane. So... We'll just go in there and we will just snug it up and we'll go ahead and do the same thing to the other side okay it's about in the middle it's a good starting point i know it's going to have to go one way or the other I will wait until I get to the setup process before I start doing all that. And as you can see, I didn't even tighten those down all the way. So now let's go ahead and get these on the plane. All right, guys. So we're going to go ahead and do this side right here first. So we will go ahead and need the right stab. You do have this collar and the whole premise is, is you have this hole right here. That's going to slide onto this shaft and then you're going to drop this. Slide this on in and then you're going to go ahead and drop this boy on there and use a screw to go ahead and tighten that down. So let's go ahead and let's do that. 
And we're gonna be lining up this slot to this little custom servo arm. And as you can see, there it is. I go ahead and I'll take my little guy and this guy just drops right in there. Just drop him in, line him up. You might have to wiggle him around and I got him in. Let's go ahead and bring that pilot hole and these shafts, they do have threads through them. So the screws, they'll go right through uh, that with no issues. After this installation, guys, I'm just doing this for the video. I, <clears throat> when I do this and I get this mechanically um, set up, when the plane is on and bounded and I have my neutral, I will be going through and I will be adding Loctite, blue Loctite to uh, that screw. So let's go ahead and do the other side exactly the way we did this. All right guys, so this is the right side and now we did the left side. And uh, as you guys can see, it's one, two, three of the three millimeter by eight millimeter screws. Those will do the back end. Now let's go ahead and move on to the rudders. All right, everybody, next we're gonna go ahead and do the rudders. Like I said, uh, they are keyed. If you try and put the wrong one on the wrong side, you will see the deflection um, that's wrong. So make sure you, you orientate it the right way. This is the one for this side right here. And we will go ahead and connect this and recess this back down on the plane so we don't get any um, movement or anything. And uh, we'll go ahead and it takes two of the three by 16 millimeter screws. So let's go ahead and put this, connect this in, make sure you get the polarity right. So I go ahead and I pull it out and there's some gray paint so it's gonna make it a little harder to see. So I have positive on this side and we'll go down right in there just like that. Connected and we'll go ahead and fish this down into the plane. So we can go ahead and get her lined up. And she is almost lined up and it is that easy, everybody. Let's go ahead and bring in the back. Make sure the holes are lined up. Everything looks good. Go ahead and see if it'll take a screw. That way we don't strip anything or damage it. Try the one in the front. And it feels like we have money. And we'll just finger tight that bad boy. And we'll go ahead and get the back one. This back side, guys, it is not threaded, so you are screwing um, into the plastic. So you just gotta get her started. And you don't wanna over tighten it, so you strip out the hole. Just go with a little touch. And that's it, guys. Too easy. Let's go ahead and get the other side done. All right, everybody. We are into this probably about an actual five minutes of building. We got our two rudders. We got our two horizontal stabs. Mind you, we still have to give it the four degrees when we go ahead and set it up. Next, let's go ahead and we're gonna take the spar and we're gonna go ahead and put it through the plane. All right. Actually, let's flip this thing over first. The screws are from the underneath. Make sure we don't catch our rudders. Looks good enough for government work. Make sure, there we go. All right, let me go ahead and make sure this is in frame and it is. Go ahead and move it back a little bit, guys. And we're gonna go ahead and shove our rod right through. We'll go ahead and we will take one of our wings and remember, you do have to connect these up and they do give you the polarity. Flap and aileron signal is towards the front. So we'll go ahead and take our spar and try not to get into the camera view. And we're gonna take our two leads, 
our aileron, and our flap, and we're gonna go ahead and plug them in. So aileron and signal there. And like I said, guys, um, if you don't wanna go ahead and do this every time, you can go ahead and leave the wings on. This is not too much of an annoyance for me. I kinda like these connectors, um, just the servo connectors. Uh, a lot of people don't like them, uh, don't know why. To me, they've always worked, they've never failed. Um, not like other quick connectors that are out there. Now, when you get your ones that are in your higher end models, those are fine. Um, you get the ones that was like in my FMS P47. Those things are garbage. Don't even fly your plane on them. I know you got guys out there that say they don't have any issues. Well, they're the lucky ones. You will run into issues, I guarantee you, uh, further on down the line and no reason to destroy your model for something that you could have easily fixed and averted. So we got that wing on. Excuse me guys, and we're gonna go ahead and get two more of the three millimeter by 16 millimeters. And one's gonna go right here in the rear and one's gonna go right here in the front. These are brass threaded guys, so make sure you don't strip them or over tighten them. I've seen people wrenching down on these things. And honestly, I do not know why. You know, I, I just, I don't know what the whole thing is. Y'all you, um, scared that, you know, the wing's gonna fly off or something. I mean, you gotta look at it. These things are like a, a pin. It's pretty much all they are is a pin, a threaded pin. If they screw out, they weren't even in at all. That one's done. And I am pushing on it on this side, guys. This is the first time the wing's on, and they usually are pretty tight. I don't like to quote unquote make them fit by driving the screws down. I like to have the screws go in so I will smash the wing a little bit. And that's pretty much it on to install the wing. So let's go ahead and do the other side. All right, everybody. Now we got our two wings on. We're gonna go ahead and flip her over. And while we do that, let's go ahead and take a look at that gear. Um, it is full uh, retracting gear. They also twist. You have a two gear door set up over here. They are synchronized doors. Let's go ahead and flip her over. And what do y'all think, huh? Ain't that badass? I love it. It's gonna be a good flyer this weekend. It will be, it's maiden. It will be 4th of July. It's gonna be pretty cool. So we go ahead and bring this thing on back. And we're gonna go ahead and put on our little side missiles. They just go right in and they slide to the rear. I mean, there's really nothing more to it. We'll do the other side. It gives it that little extra flare on it. Make sure that they lock so when you fly, they just don't come out because that has happened to me and then all of a sudden you're like well where's my missile all right it's in there and the nose cone nice and tight on the nose cone and that's pretty much it y'all other than the setup and getting our uh, angle of deflection let me go ahead and move this back there she is. She is an awesome plane. I love the F-18s. I like the way they fly. I hope this one right here, I don't go through my gear issues. I'm gonna go ahead and get this thing set up. I'm gonna go ahead and get the tail on uh, down and do the CG. Uh, Maiden will be coming up this Saturday for 4th of July. So go ahead and stay tuned, y'all. Noon's out. 